the majority of the cooling system is housed within the radiator panel. So all the plumbing from the pipework, the pump, the radiator itself, the fan, and the filler and expansion tank. So the coolant's kind of coming in from, the hot coolant's coming in from the motor controller through here, passing the expansion tank, filler tank at the highest point, coming back in then through the radiator on this side, out again through the pump, and then back into the, the cooler coolant is going back into the chill plate. So this radiator, we worked with PWR to create something that was, I guess, just the size to fit into a, a Land Rover, a series Land Rover panel, but also the right size to keep a uh, HBAVS uh, AC50 or a NetGate Hyper 9 motor controller cool at a 40 degree ambient temperature at maximum load, which with no sort of airflow, right? So that sounds overkill, but you can imagine off-road, you might be moving very slowly uphill and using maximum throttle, so pulling maximum current through the motor controller, but you're really, you're moving at five kilometers an hour. So this fan allows us to have uh, PWM control. So basically we can, we can control through the PDM, so the 12 volt control unit. We can just set the speed of this fan. So we can have a very low speed fan for general operation. And then if we sense a, a higher temperature, we can turn it up and, and suck more through. So for the most part, we can run this at about 20, 30% of its normal speed. Um, and, even, and even when you start up the car, these things don't turn on immediately just by default. They turn on when the motor controller or the, you know, the, the temperature of the motor controller and the coolant gets to a certain point. If it's a cold day, you'll probably never hear this. If you're just idling along, maybe even you know, driving around at 40 k's an hour, you might not hear this for the first 20 minutes of, of driving because it simply won't get hot enough. There's captive nuts in the four corners of the radiator itself, which allowed us to build and weld in little, just little brackets, support brackets, and put in a bolt um, at each corner to hold up the radiator essentially. But it means that it fits really nicely in the front of an old Land Rover. And importantly, gives us continual access to the you know, bonnet release mechanism there at the front. We've also got a lot more space here to allow things for the future when we're running Tesla batteries that require their own cooling system and or have coolant pumped through them. And we can use small radiators in, in this area or oil coolers and even over here where the, where the horn is. The other thing is that these don't have to be at the front of the car. We're not needing massive volumes of airflow that are created by the car, you know, traveling along the highway. We could put this under the car middle of the car, rear of the car, have it sucking up, have it sucking down, whatever it might be. So there's a lot of flexible mounting options as if we start to need more space in the car. With the cooling system mounted on the car, you kind of get an idea of how small it is in context. So just this, this small radiator, but again, it's bigger than a lot of uh, other people use on EV conversions, but that means we just need, we can guarantee that it's staying cool. We can run the fan at lower speeds or not at all, uh, depending on the temperature. And then as it runs past and out of this, out of, the, out of the pump, it runs along these two aluminum pipes that are mounted down here and then back into the, the chill plate on the motor controller. So this is just without its final cover. Thank you.